Good morning, Pastor Brian here from The Gathering House, and uh, we trust that all is well in your household, and uh, trust that uh, you are feeling some peace and throughout these days, and that's what we're here to, to talk about this morning. Uh, as I said, we're in The Gathering House this morning, and if uh, you have needs, uh, if you need to contact someone, you can go to our website www.thegatheringhouse.ca and uh, you'll find links where you can uh, make a request or get in touch with some of us here at the church. So, so please keep that in mind. So this morning we're talking about relief for the uncertain and I trust that it goes without saying that a lot of us have that feeling of uncertainty over these last couple of weeks and uh, we want to give you some things to think about this morning about how we can uh, look beyond that uncertainty and find uh, some solid ground and the passage that I'm looking at is a passage in the Old Testament where Jesus, where Israel makes a transition in its leadership and uh, there was a lot of uncertainty at that point. And uh, so let me read that passage found in uh, Deuteronomy 31, uh, verses uh, 1 uh, to 8. And then we'll uh, pray and then look at what this word has to say to us this morning. So in Deuteronomy 31, verse 1, it says, So Moses continued to speak these words to all Israel. And he said to them, I am 120 years old today. I am no longer able to go out and come in. The Lord has said to me, you shall not go over this Jordan. The Lord your God himself will go over before you. He will destroy these nations before you so that you shall dispossess them. And Joshua will go over at your head as the Lord has spoken. And the Lord will do to them as he did to Sihon and Og, the kings of the Amorites, and to their land and he, when he destroyed them. And the Lord will give them over to you, and you shall do to them according to the whole commandment that I have commanded you. Be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them, for it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Then Moses summoned Joshua and said to him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and courageous, for you shall go with this people into the land that the Lord has sworn to their fathers to give them. And you shall put them in possession of it. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Let's pause for a moment and pray together. Father, we just thank you for your presence with us. We thank you, Lord, that in the midst of all of these uncertainties, in the midst of this world that we find ourselves in at this time, we pray, Lord, that... Uh, we would know beyond the shadow of a doubt your presence with us, that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And Lord, in the midst of all of this turmoil, all of this uncertainty, Lord, we pray that you would be our anchor, that you would be our peace, Lord, that uh, you would go with us and be with us, and Lord, that we would know that and just give us a peace and a calmness that we need in these days. So Lord, be with us as we look at this passage in Deuteronomy, and we pray, Lord, that you would help us regardless of our situation, Lord, to understand that you love us, that you care for us, and that you are right there with us. And we give you praise and thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. So in recent days, you've probably heard people around you say and found yourself repeating, I've never seen anything like this before. And without question, these are uncertain times in which we're living. And many of us feel that our country, our world, is standing on the brink, but of what, we don't know. Researchers tell us that all this stress created by our sense of uncertainty is not only unsettling, it's unhealthy, it is slowly and quite literally killing us in the medical terms that we look at. Some years ago, Dutch researchers conducted an experiment in which they told one group of people that they would receive 20 strong shocks. They told a second group they'd receive only three strong shocks, 
along with 17 mild ones, but the shocks would be administered randomly. Those researchers discovered that the second group sweated more and experienced faster heart rates than the first group. It was the uncertainty that caused their discomfort, not the intensity of the shocks. In another study, colostomy patients who knew their colostomies would be permanent were happier six months after their operations than those who were told there might be a chance of reversing their colostomies. Once again, uncertainty caused the greater pain. Commenting on these studies, Harvard psychologist Danny Gilbert concluded, and I quote, an uncertain future leaves us stranded in an unhappy present with nothing to do but wait. Sound familiar? That's as true today as it was over a decade ago when those studies were done. And this same principle was just as true over 3,000 years ago when Moses told the people of Israel that he was dying and they'd have to go on without him as their leader. And worn out from 40 years of wilderness wandering, Moses admitted what many already suspected. And in verse 2 of this passage, he said, I am no longer able to go out and come in. The Lord has said to me, you shall not go over this Jordan. Imagine the collective gasp that would have arisen from the people. Could such news have come at a more inappropriate time? These people were standing at the very brink of of the land that God had promised their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, some 700 to 400 years earlier. But before they could call this promised land their own, they were faced with wild rivers to cross, walled cities to storm, waiting armies to battle, and a wide array of unknowns to face. An uncertain future threatened to leave them stranded in an unhappy present with nothing to do but wait. Moses, though, did not want them to wait, to muddle about in the mire of the unknown for the foreseeable future. Instead, he summoned the people and in their hearing charged his successor Joshua with these words, found in verses 7 and 8 of our passage. Be strong and courageous, for you shall go with this people into the land the Lord has sworn to their fathers to give them, and you shall put them in possession of it. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. As we talk about uncertainty, and as you see on this slide that is coming up at this time, Part of what makes uncertainty so stressful and potentially debilitating is it pushes against the twin pillars of which life and faith rest, the pillars of trust for today and hope for tomorrow. When those pillars begin to shake, fear fills our hearts, clouds our judgment, and weakens our resolves. Instead of allowing uncertainty to freeze us in place, it would serve us well to recall and act upon Moses' reminder to Joshua when he said, It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. So in these uncertain days in which we are living, I believe we will find the strength and joy we need if we will take heart with these directives from this passage. And there are three of them that we're going to look at. And directive number one says, trust in the precedence of your Lord. Again, in the scripture, it said, it is the Lord who goes before you. Yahweh is the covenantal name of God. Yahweh is a covenant-making and covenant-keeping God, 
and he is absolutely trustworthy. It is the Lord that goes before you. No godly guide but God himself. Thank God for godly guides like Moses, who had been Israel's guide and Joshua's mentor. It was Moses who marched into Pharaoh's court, demanding his people to be set free. It was Moses who lifted his staff over the Red Sea and the waters parted. It was Moses who crossed that line and climbed Mount Sinai to receive the Ten Commandments. And it was Moses who had led his people safe thus far. Thank God for godly guides like Moses, like your Christian parents if you were so blessed. Godly guides like faithful pastors and elders, believing friends, neighbors, co-workers. But realize, though, there comes a time when godly guides must go. There comes a time when the training wheels must come off. And the purpose of training wheels isn't to train you to ride on training wheels. Their purpose is to train you to ride a bike unassisted. And so it is with godly guides. They are given for a season, given to help us outgrow our dependence on them, and given to help us look for ourselves to the Lord who goes before us. It was Yahweh who went before his people when they came out of Egypt. Yes, Moses was the lead man, but he was only following God in the cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. It was God who was the first man in, not Moses. In the New Testament, Jesus is called the first fruits of the resurrection. And the book of Hebrews refers to Jesus as the pioneer, the trailblazer of our faith. And Jesus entered into heaven's holy of holies first, following his resurrection, so that we might follow after. When we're feeling uncertain, trust in the precedence of the Lord, so that he might prepare the way before us. Because wherever he guides, he provides. Trust that. Trust him. But secondly, this passage teaches us that we need to rest in the presence of our Lord. And again, the passage says, He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. People in the ancient world believed in provincial gods and territorial spirits. In their minds, to move into a foreign land was to take up residence in another god's backyard. It was an act of trespassing, and it was a seriously scary business. Jesus once met a man inhabited by a multitude of evil spirits. Legion was his nickname. And when Jesus threatened to expel those spirits from, spirits from their poor, beleaguered host, Mark tells us that the man speaking on behalf of those vile spirits begged Jesus earnestly not to send them out of the country. In Mark 5 and verse 10. Apparently, they felt at home in the region and were not inclined to leave. It's interesting that sometimes those who travel to various parts of the world where evil or destructive events took place often speak of a feeling slightly uncomfortable as they tour those areas. Probably one of the most prominent of these areas were the place of Nazi death camps in Germany. And as this happened, do you think it happens because of the knowledge that people have of those events and places, or was it something else? Some spirit living there 
maybe. It would have been natural for Joshua and those Israelites coming out of Egypt to wonder if the God who brought them out would also go with them into the land of Canaan's gods. Could he? Who had brought them safe thus far cross this unknown border with them? Had they forgotten that they carried the Ark of the Covenant, the seat of their God's presence, with them as, as they traveled? And this covenant was pitched in the middle of their camp every night. And all they had to do was to look there and know that God was with them. When we're feeling uncertain, we don't need to worry that God has brought us safe thus far or, and can't go with us further or won't take the next step with us. All we need to do is look down at the center of our chest, to our heart, his throne, and remember he goes with us. One of the names of our Lord is Emmanuel, which means God with us. And Jesus promises to go with us to the ends of the world, and he is true to his promise. Unlike what the ancients believed about their gods, Yahweh doesn't tie himself down to a single place, but to people. And throughout the Old Testament, he identifies himself as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In other words, people. He ties himself to people, and he does it one person at a time by the what we call the scarlet thread of faith. If you've placed your faith in Jesus, you can rest in the assurance that he will never leave you or forsake you. He goes with you. And when you're feeling uncertain, trust in the precedence of your Lord. He goes before you. And rest in the presence of your Lord. He goes with you. But thirdly, and finally, we learn this, that we need to proceed in the peace of our Lord. Proceed in the peace of our Lord. And again, the scripture says, do not fear or be dismayed. Fear, that word. And in the Old Testament, that word is yare. And we understand what it's like to fear, but what does it mean to be dismayed? And the Hebrew word for the word dismay is katha. It means to break down as a result of confusion or fear, or to become discouraged, to have your heart ripped out of your soul. What happens, in a practical way, what happens when your car goes katha, or as we would say today, kaput? Well, you're immobilized. You can't go anywhere. You're stuck. And that's what it's like to be dismayed. You're frozen in place, and you can't advance. However, fear and trepidation aren't altogether bad and to be avoided. Quite the contrary. Fear is a God-given alarm to alert us to potential harm. Fear is a powerful and much needed alarm, but it makes for terrible control. Think about this for a minute. On the walls of your home, you likely have a smoke detector and a thermostat. One of those is an alarm, the other is a control. The smoke detector can't control smoke. It can only alert you to the presence of smoke. 
the thermostat can not only detect the temperature of the room, but it can control the temperature by turning your heater and air conditioner on and off. We need to pay attention to our fears, just like we do when we hear the wail of a smoke detector. But we should never let our fears become our thermostat. So how do we do that? We keep our fears from controlling us by keeping them in proper perspective. And that's different from ignoring the alarm or simply dismissing it. Not every time the smoke detector goes off does it mean the house is on fire. It may be something burning on the stove or smoke from a wood stove when you stoke it. But that's not to say fires aren't real or that my house couldn't catch on fire. Therefore, it would be foolish of me to ignore the smoke detector or dismiss it by assuming there's no fire. The wise thing for me to do would be to check it out and to put that alarm in proper perspective. The Bible doesn't try to convince us our fears are unfounded or that what we perceive as dangerous really isn't dangerous at all. Instead, the Bible helps us address our fears by putting them in proper perspective. Moses didn't tell his people that the opposition they'd face in Canaan posed no threat. That would have been foolish. Instead, he put the opposition in perspective by reminding them that their covenant-making, covenant-keeping Lord went before them and that he would be with them. Jesus does the exact same thing for us in Luke 12, verses 4 to 7. In this passage, he tells us not to fear man who can kill the body, but are powerless to harm us beyond that. Instead, he says, Fear God, who can destroy both body and soul. Some fears are greater than others. Viruses are fearsome. Economic depressions are fearsome. But Scripture tells us that God is to be feared above all those things. So going back to the beginning of this message, what did our good doctor say to us? What did Daniel Gilbert say? He said, an uncertain future leaves us stranded in an unhappy present with nothing to do but wait. But what did Moses say? And these are our words that we need to grab a hold of and live by these days. He said, it is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. In these troublesome days, in these days of uncertainty, I choose to believe Moses. How about you? Probably the words that we can live by on a regular basis from Scripture that speaks specifically to this whole theme of uncertainty are found in Philippians 4, 6, and 7. And I trust that we can commit these words to our hearts and souls as ways in which God gives us ways to get over the uncertainty. And Paul wrote these words to us. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. I trust we find that peace in these days. I trust that we are confident in the God who goes with us and before us. 
and we will find that peace. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we know very simply that transitions are not always easy. And Father, as we look at the days in which we live, with the growth of the coronavirus and all of the related issues that go with it, Father, we can't help but feel anxious at times a bit and uncertain. But Father, I pray, Lord, that as we stop to ponder the words of God, Lord, that we would know beyond a shadow of a doubt that our God goes before us. There is nothing that happens that he is not aware of. There is nothing that takes place that he is not surprised by. And Father, I thank you that we are also in faith to know God goes with us, that he will never leave us or forsake us. Lord, that he will go with us. And so, Father, I pray that these would be our words of assurance in these days. Lord, that we are not alone, that we do not have to fear, we do not have to be racked by uncertainty, but we know a God who loves us, cares for us, and goes with us. And we give you praise and thanks in his name for all these things.